Hi everyone, it's Jerry. This is a game from 2007 between the 12th world champion Anatoly Karpov, who's playing the white pieces, and international master Mahajlo Stojanovic. We have a French defense Fort Knox variation, and Karpov's able to make a chess miniature out of it, game lasting only 25 moves, so let's see exactly how this was accomplished. Opening up e4, e6 French defense after d4, d5, knight c3. These next two moves played by black will indicate that Fort Knox variation, namely capturing on e4 and then playing bishop to d7, where from this point the bishop will look to pivot on c6 and then capture on e4 or f3, you know, essentially give itself up for one of the knights, at which point the primary focus would then be to secure this d5 square, to direct pieces to control that d5 square. And the reason why that is so important is because this is where there's potential for a pawn break. This is where the position can open up, and if white's going to be the side that has the two bishops, they're going to want to open up the position, so it stands to reason black should restrain that idea. So, moving forward, knight f3, more development, bishop c6, bishop d3, development, watching over that knight, and now a very important position is this one right here. If you're the side playing black, it's important not to do very routine-like moves, such as knight to f6, because if you think that after knight takes knight you can recapture with your queen, you're sadly mistaken, because bishop to g5 will end up trapping your queen. And if you're thinking black could maybe be clever with a move like bishop takes knight, well, it doesn't quite work in this position because we just play as white, queen d2. And once again, what to do with that queen? There's no way out. Taking the pawn would run into bishop b5. Queen is lost. So certainly a little trap right here to be aware of right out of the gates here. Don't play this knight to f6 move. Instead, knight d7 is the move to play. Supporting that f6, you know, only, only later that knight could be played here. The other purpose is going to be to watch over that e5 square. As soon as a white knight plays there, there's always the option to just get rid of it. So more development, white castles, and only now, after this queen knight has first developed to d7, only now do we see this knight on g to f6 move being played. So pressure on e4, what to do, the knight retreats, and you know this, this makes sense because white is the side that has a space advantage. They have the pawn on d4, black has no pawns in the center, so just kind of avoiding exchanges with this knight retreat. And so after bishop to e7, rook to e1, and black castling, now we have queen to e2. Now, one thing to be aware of is that, uh, as I was saying earlier, this, this bishop looks to give itself up for this knight on f3, and then watch over this d5 square. Now, you'll note, looking on the white side, white is taking these type of things in mind, seeing that black at any moment can take this knight You'll note that that's why we're not seeing a move like queen to e2 right now. We're seeing in this position first rook to e1. Because if black is going to take this knight, white is wanting to just play the queen to d1 to f3 in one shot. And so if we were to, let's say, have this variation where the queen played to e2, the bishop took the knight now, and then the queen takes, if you take a snapshot of this position, you'll note that it is now black's move. Okay? But if we hit the rewind button, and in this position right here, if rook to e1, and then the bishop takes the knight, queen goes from d1 to f3 in one shot, and yes, once again, it's black's move in this position, but you'll note that this rook is certainly much better placed, developed on this half-open file, so white is essentially saving a move. What black is looking to do is wait for first this queen to move to that e2 square, and only then take on the f3 square. So this actually doesn't happen in the game, but I'm just trying to emphasize the importance of the move order, why we're seeing first rook to e1 opposed to maybe the queen to e2 move. So after rook to e1, we have black now castling, queen to e2, and this is a moment where black has this idea. You know, they could just go ahead and grab on f3, but Black is trying something completely different, and it really does not work out at all. Now, b6 was the move played in the game, but just showing quickly a couple moves down the line here. Bishop takes knight, qu 
queen takes bishop, again, d5 is going to be of great importance. This is where we would now have what's known as the Fort Knox variation. This is the ideal setup. Black does not have that light square bishop, but has pawns on light squares, which is ideally what you will want to do. And there is a lot of control over that d5 square, and this is a difficult position to break down. This is, you know, why it's kind of getting its name, the Fort Knox defense. It's a difficult fort to crack. And so we don't really enter that territory at all. Black is uh, coming up with something different, playing this b6 move, looking to just tuck this bishop back and then maybe play this c5 advance. So taking these things into account, this is what's prompting white's next move. Since this, this bishop wants to make use of that b7 square, and a hole has now been created on a6, bishop a6, not even allowing that bishop to retreat. And this square right here is now weakened as a result of that pawn to b6 advance, and this is highlighted in a great, great way in this game. So how does black kind of get out of this situation here? Because this pawn has to move in order for the black position to be freed up. So rook to b8 is looking to play back to b7 with the bishop and just eliminate this a6 bishop, a very annoying piece. So from here, now c4, again, getting ready to maybe press forward with d5 at any point. Bishop b7, we have the exchange on b7, and this is a very awkward looking rook, and the alternatives aren't so bright. And what I mean by alternative, well, if the bishop is to, let's say, go to the corner, well, what in the world does black do after bishop to f4? This pawn can't even move. This rook looks ridiculous. It can't move at all. And you can't even chase away this bishop. Sometimes there would be a move like knight to d5 hitting the bishop. That's not happening. Moving here, that's not happening either. There's nothing good to even do in the black position. So it's important to try and just get rid of this bishop, but how, how white treats it from here on out, there's not really a good solution for black. Since the light square bishop is no longer on the board, and again, this, this rook, I get a fiend kettled rook, that's not really a situation you want to be in. This c6 square is really going to come, uh, it's really just going to hurt black in a big, big way. So knight e5 already eyeing that c6 square. And the alternative, maybe, you know, maybe black could have taken right here in this situation and played from here on out. But certainly there's still a lot of pressure white would have on the black side. Queen to g4 comes to mind with just thoughts of developing this bishop to h6, inducing some sort of a weakness, and look at the development. And again, look at this clown on uh, b7. I mean, what is it really doing over here? Very, very silly uh, setup going on on the black side. So this is one reason maybe why we're not seeing, in other words, knight takes on e5. This knight's going to be kicked away, open file, the queen's able to come here, etc. Okay. So instead, we have queen to c8 just preparing to meet, you know, this knight was going to come here with tempo on the queen, so just moving the queen out of the way first. Knight c6 comes, and this bishop's being hit. Uh, the, that bishop on e7 is being hit, and after rook to e8 to defend, just completing the development. You know, this right here is now indicating white is fully developed. Whenever you have your rooks now connected, that's, that's, uh, that's the cue. You know, that's pretty much your way to know when you are fully developed, when your rooks are connected. So bishop g5 does just that, and how exactly to eliminate this c6 knight? And the, the strength of this piece on that c6 square is enormous because this rook can't even move. It's stuck. It could go to b8, but it's it gets captured if it goes there, and there's no way to liberate that rook. So after bishop to f8, we have white voluntarily just giving up their bishop. And what is the big reason for this? Well, white recognizes the strength of this c6 knight, and white wants to maintain that knight there. And so by taking this knight and having black recapture on f6 with this knight, you'll know this, this knight on c6 isn't going to go anywhere fast. However, one plan black might have from this from this position is to maybe challenge that c6 knight by bringing the knight to b8 and that's actually what is attempted in this game but it comes too little too late and we'll see that finishing up very quickly 
So we have the capture on f6, and now after the knight recaptures, if this knight is going to be eliminated, it's going to take quite a bit of time, knight d7 to b8, and that's what black attempts to do. In the meantime, what does white look to do? Well, seeing how this rook is really out of play, and this queen on c8 not really contributing to the position whatsoever, white takes the opportunity to seize an attack against the black king and is successful. So knight to h5, trying to eliminate that knight, making way to uh, just, just eliminate the defender on the king's side. And if this knight on f6 is not there, the queen can make use of g4. And uh, these are the sorts of things that happen in this game. After knight to d7, we have queen g4 with the threat of maybe knight to f6 winning that rook. For example, knight to b6 is going to just lose material. We have that little fork going on. So black meets this threat first. Instead of knight to b6, we just have the king sneaking in the corner. And now a little rook lift, getting a third piece involved. Three pieces uh, coming in on the attack against the black king. In the meantime, in order to get this rook involved, this knight has to be chased away. So this is what black is looking to do. Knight to b8, not the greatest move to have to play, but what more is there going to be in this position? Not really a whole lot. So a little bit of calculation being played at this point right here on the white side finishes up the game very nicely. White does not even need to react to the threat of knight takes knight because there are more forcing things going on against the black king. Rook g3, and in this position we see f5, but just looking at a quick what if, what if knight takes knight? We would just have knight takes on g7. Not really a whole lot to do. The main threat being just knight takes rook, followed by mate on g8. And playing bishop to d6, for example, doesn't really do a whole lot at all because if you think you could grab the rook, well, that's not defending mate. Bishop takes rook. We don't mate on g8, but instead g7. So not really a good way out at this point if the knight on c6 is captured and really it's just lost. There's no successful defense at this point, unfortunately, for black. The game finishes up very nicely with just f5 chasing that queen away to h4 opposite the black king. And after now, knight takes on c6. If you'd like to, try and find the uh, knockout blow in this position. Go ahead, pause the video. Okay, the winning move right here is just knight to f6. Very strong move, very direct threat, just getting ready to take on h7 to deliver mate. If the knight is captured, we have check followed by mate. So in the game, what we did see is pawn to h6, and hopefully you came up with this next really, really sharp move. Queen takes h6, something you would certainly see in a chess puzzle book. Pawn takes queen, and then the game finishes up very nicely all the way to mate. No resignation in this game. We actually get to see checkmate. Rook to g8, and that's mate. So that's all for this video. As always, I hope you got something out of it. Take care. Bye.